everybody. Eric and Allison here once again with DW Travel. Our electric camper van road trip is continuing. Now we're heading through Italy. Our plan today is to hop in the van and head further south to get out of the crowds and off the beaten path. But first, we had to make a very special stop here in the city of Murano. Murano sits in the Italian province of South Tyrol here in Italy. It's nestled in this valley between these huge mountains that surround it. There's tons to do in the area from hiking to visiting wineries, or you can do like us and head down to the Old Town which is filled with all of these amazing structures spanning the centuries. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it really is not a bad way to spend a day here in Italy. And you can check out some of the amazing castles in the area, like this, Troutmansdorf Castle, which is known for its sprawling gardens and beautiful panoramic views. Yeah, coming up here just for the views alone, it's totally worth it. You can see all the mountains in the area. You can see all the surrounding countryside. And the gardens are incredible. They really do cover such a huge area. They have hedge mazes over there. There are tons of beautiful, vibrant flowers all over the place and a bunch of really cool lookout points so you can get an even higher view of the area. Plus, there is an EV charging station in the parking lot here at the castle. So while we're exploring the beautiful gardens, our car's getting all charged up. Murano is also known for having some absolutely delicious cuisine, so we're gonna stroll around the gardens a little bit more, and then time to eat. we came to a restaurant called Forster Brow, which is right here in the old part of the town. So first up, we have this, it's a sampling of all the local meats and a few of their cheeses. What we're really excited for is this speck noodle. So these are bacon dumplings in this delicious broth. Normally it'd be covered with chives, but we're not huge chive fans, so no chives for us. Out of habit, I reached for my knife to cut into these dumplings, but I read that it's actually very impolite. The dumplings should cut on their own with a fork, and using a knife is rude. <laughs> I don't know if that's still true nowadays, but I'll stick with the fork. So these dumplings are super soft and doughy. It's almost like a biscuit consistency on the inside. And then you get these little pops of the bacon in there, which are nice and crunchy and fatty. And then the broth in general is just very perfect. It's a little salty and it just complements the dumplings perfectly. I got a beer here. Oh yes, we got a local beer and a local wine to try. Time has come to head out of Murano. We're actually gonna be heading further down south, kind of in the middle of nowhere, so we stopped by a grocery store to load up on some food. Yes, because tomorrow is Sunday, I think a lot of things are closed, and it's supposed to be stormy. So we got enough provisions to last us for a couple days. Yeah, the downside of that is we had to create a little bit more waste. But luckily we both had our backpacks, so yeah. we didn't have to use any bags, and the store had everything out fresh, so we could just put it into a paper bag. All right, but now we're gonna head back to our trusty camper van hit the road. Little update on the charging situation. So we told you guys we were charging while we were at the castle. Unfortunately, we did it something wrong or we didn't tap our card right and we did not really charge at all. We're trying desperately to find a charging station but every single one we go to is either not really there or it's deep within a hotel that we're not sure how to access it. And now somehow we've gotten ourselves stuck in a gated community. <laughs> not really sure how to get out of here. <laughs> I guess we live here now. <laughs> I don't know what to we're do. We're residents now. Okay, a nice lady saw that we were struggling and opened the gate for us. <laughs> so we've left the gated community at least. Y'all, I have no idea where I am. I'm pretty sure this is a one-way street and I am going the absolute wrong way. <laughs> We had to go to a couple more spots and uh, sadly the pumps were not working. But I think this one is gonna be our lucky pump, you guys. This is the same one we used yesterday, so we're staying hopeful. Yeah. It's hard to tell some of these whether or not you have to pay for them. Some of them have been free and some of them have a little spot to put a card on there. So it turns out this one does require payment, but it should be charging now. We're in luck, we are officially charging. 
So we are back on the road. The fill up took a little bit longer than we were anticipating. It took about 45 minutes and unfortunately the filling station that we stopped at was closed down so there was nothing for us to do so we had to just kind of sit around in here. Uh, and we ended up actually leaving a little bit before it was fully charged which now I'm realizing might have been a mistake on our end. We've gone down by about a little over 100 kilometers worth of charge while we've only driven about 50 kilometers. So it's going down about double as fast as we're traveling. Yeah, so that's one thing we've learned about this electric vehicle is that you really can't trust the range estimation that it gives you. We've actually mostly been on the motorway for those 50 kilometers. We only had a couple turnoffs, so I wouldn't have thought it would go down this quickly. But all that aside, we are back on the road and we figured this would be a good opportunity to give you guys an idea of what it's like driving the electric car now that we've had it for a few days. It's actually just like driving any car. It accelerates, stops, just like you would expect. The air conditioning works, all of the amenities are just fine. I don't know if I was expecting it to drive any differently, but it definitely doesn't. The big difference is really just the sound that it makes. Obviously, when you start up a gas engine and while you're driving it, you can hear it, it makes a lot of sound. This doesn't make much sound at all. Instead of the sound of a gasoline engine, you just kind of hear this calm electric hum. It's also just really nice that the camper van is self-contained. So that means that anywhere we go, we can basically have everything we need to stay the night. And as you might expect, it can also get a little bit cramped on the inside because we have all of our luggage in here, we have all of our gear, and then of course the two of us. So it was pretty tight quarters. But the first night that we stayed, it was actually raining outside, which was kind of challenging because that meant if you got outside and then came in, you would track a bunch of mud everywhere. So basically we just had to stay on the inside. Unfortunately, there are likely going to be bad storms tonight and all through tomorrow. So we've decided to book ourselves an Airbnb up in the hills so that we can stay nice and dry. And then we don't have to worry about charging for a couple days. All right, fingers crossed that our charge lasts long enough to get us to our destination. <laughs> So it's gonna be pretty close getting up there because right now our range is going down for about five to 10 kilometers for every one kilometer <laughs> because we're going up a hill and there's just a whole bunch of switchbacks to get up to where our Airbnb is. And theoretically the meter shows that we have half the battery left. So yeah. I think we're gonna make it, but it's gonna suck all the juice down just to get up this hill. Oh That's crazy. Yeah. Your destination is on the right. We made it you guys with a little bit of charge to spare. <laughs> and we are at the tippy top of this mountain. Yo. We got to the end of the road and it turned into like this nasty little almost gravel road. Well, we're here. <laughs> yeah, we, we wanted to get away from the crowds and uh, we did it. <laughs> we have arrived at our Italian chalet. We told you guys we're gonna try to charge our vehicle here. So this is what we had to do because there's no outside outlets. We got it plugged up here. We got it going up into, this is actually where we're staying. So that is just plugged in right here to that outlet. And it goes right on down to the car. How long does it say to charge? Um, 14 hours. 14 hours, that's not what? so bad. And we're super low. All, All right. right, it's gonna work. <laughs> we have power. We have power. Good afternoon, you guys. Hello there. So we rolled in with about 60 kilometers of range left on our electric vehicle, which I'm gonna say is pretty good. Yeah, we made it all the way to the tippy top on very little charge, which yeah. is excellent. Plus they give us all these adapters. So the way that it works is that basically if you can adapt and get it to plug in, you're gonna get power. Right. Some's gonna be slow, some's gonna be fast, but you're gonna get power. That being said, <laughs> we have been able to plug into a standard electrical outlet up in there. So you get a very slow charge, but if you leave it overnight, we should have a full battery. Yeah, it's actually great. So we can chill here, charge up our batteries, and then tomorrow we can hit the road fresh again. So we are actually on a hill perched up above the town of Levico Terme, which is in the province of Trento. And we arrived at our amazing villa that we got on Airbnb epic views all around of all the surrounding countryside. The fog's starting to roll in, the rain the is rain coming. The rain is starting. <laughs> 
But I think that's our cue to wrap things up. So we're gonna leave you guys here and we hope that you'll tune in for the next leg of the electric camper van journey. We're gonna be moving even further south into Italy next, you yes. guys. Down to Sermione next and then down to Cinque Terre. Oh yeah. And then, who knows? All right, goodbye. We'll see ya.